This is one of those videos that I sat down and tried to come up with an interesting intro for, but every idea I had just sucked. So, this is the intro you get today. This guy here is the WD My Passport Wireless Pro. I picked it up for a very specific reason, that being its ability to act as a media server, uh, more specifically a Plex media server, which I won't be going into depth on it in this video because I'm planning to cover that particular feature of this drive exclusively in my next video. I mean, come on, I need some material for additional content for the channel. I can't just go throwing everything into one video, right? In this video, I will, however, be going over most everything else about the Wireless Pro. Now, most likely, you didn't just randomly stumble across this video. You are looking at this drive very specifically. So let's take a look at it and see if we can satisfy any of the questions you may have about it. Although it is significantly larger than your average dumb external hard drive, uh, considering all the features it's packing, I feel it's still pretty compact, measuring 4 and 7 eighths inches square by 15 sixteenths of an inch thick. This guy right here is, as I'm sure you've guessed, our power button. Let me just turn this on real quick. On the main face of the drive, there's not a whole lot going on here. Uh, right next to the WD branding and whatnot are two indicator lights, the top one being the Wi-Fi indicator and the bottom one being the power slash hard drive activity indicator. Here in the upper left corner of the drive are four similar indicators, which double as the battery level indicators as well as a file transfer progress indicator. Is it just me, or did I just use the word indicator way too many times just now? On what I'm going to be calling the left side of the drive is our SD card reader, which operates at USB 3.0 speeds. Uh, this is something I think most any digital media content creator is going to really like. Let's say you're out in the field somewhere, you've been taking photos or shooting video, and reached a point where you want to back up or offload everything from your SD card. You simply insert your SD card into the built-in card reader, press this button just around the corner from it, and it will begin copying the files from your SD card to the hard drive. By default, the drive is set up to only copy new items, so if you then remove your SD card and shoot some more photos or videos, when you plug your card back into the drive, it will only copy those new items rather than copy everything from the card all over again. The drive can also be set up to automatically begin backing up files immediately upon inserting a memory card into the reader, meaning you don't have to push any buttons to initiate the backup. As you can see here, our indicator lights let us know how much progress we've made on our file transfer. Granted, it doesn't show in detail how far along we are, but being able to see progress from 25% to 50 to 75 and finally 100% is nice to have. That same button we press to initiate our file backup is also the button we push to check the drive's battery level. The battery life on the drive, I feel, is quite good. WD's marketing material says it will last for up to 10 hours, so naturally, I had to put this to the test. In my first test, I loaded some movies onto the drive, connected a couple of tablets to the drive's Wi-Fi, and started streaming movies. As soon as one movie was finished, I'd queue up another, and was able to finish three roughly two-hour-long movies before fully depleting the battery, making in total about six hours of continuous play. So six hours isn't exactly the 10 advertised hours, but at the same time, I didn't expect it to last that long while running two simultaneous video streams. So, of course, I had to run another test. For my second test, I disabled the Wi-Fi connection to my home network, and once every hour, I'd connect to the Wireless Pro's Wi-Fi using my phone and uploaded 10 files that included uh, both pictures and videos ranging in size uh, anywhere from 4 megabytes up to about a half of a gig. 
During the course of this test, I copied 90 files for a total of 1.52 gigabytes. At the nine hour mark of my test, I checked the battery level in the WD MyCloud app and it said it was at 13%. At the rate it had been going, it appeared that the battery would last for another hour and make it to that advertised 10 hour mark. However, as soon as I went to transfer the, my 10 more files, the drive shut down. So once again, it didn't make it to the advertised 10 hours, but perhaps my once per hour testing methodology taxed the battery a little more than a realistic workload would. I don't know. But in my opinion, nine hours of battery is pretty respectable, all things considered. Now I hear what you're saying. Okay, Brian, so the battery life is pretty good. What about charging time? After running the battery completely down, it took a little over three hours for it to fully recharge using the included charging cable. So yeah, I mean, three hours, it's kind of a long time, but... Most likely, a professional using the Wireless Pro for backing up and offloading data will be using it during the day and then be able to plug it in overnight where it will then be fully charged and ready to go the next morning. As we move a little further around the drive, there is a USB Type-A port which you can use to plug in USB flash drives, card readers, uh, even other external hard drives or even your phone or tablet and backup files from those devices as well. One thing that's kind of cool about the My Passport Wireless Pro, uh, when you connect your phone or tablet to it, and even when the drive is powered down, it will act as a battery bank and it will charge those devices up for you. Uh, right next to our Type-A port is the interface for the included USB 3.0 cable. You can use this cable to connect the drive to your computer to either offload data from the drive, uh, transfer files to the drive, or you can work directly from the drive. When the Wireless Pro is connected to your computer via the USB 3.0 cable, it is put into dumb external drive mode. So the wireless and all other functionality on the drive is at that time disabled. However, in the user interface, uh, there's a feature called Drive Lock that you can enable to keep the Wi-Fi and everything active. However, doing this makes the drive inaccessible via the USB cable, so plugging it into your computer will then do nothing more than charge the drive when Drive Lock is turned on. As for the rest of the device, there isn't much to see or talk about other than black plastic and the little rubber vibration pads on the bottom. So let's move into an overview of the user interface where we'll also finally talk about the main feature of this drive, which is right in the name, that being its wireless capabilities. When you first pull your drive out of the box and power it on, you're obviously going to need to do some initial setup. You can do this either through a web browser on your computer or by using the WD MyCloud app, which you can download through the Google Play Store as well as the Apple App Store. I'm not going to actually go into depth with all of this because quite frankly, I shot some video of me doing a full setup walkthrough and holy crap, was it boring. So I'm just gonna hit on a couple things that I feel are of highest importance here. During the setup process, one of the steps is to connect the Wireless Pro to your home network. This will allow you to connect directly to the drive and still access the internet as the drive essentially becomes a wireless bridge. The most important thing I feel I can share with you about this is if the password for your home network has any special characters in it at all, like the at symbol or ampersand, or something of that nature, you're going to need to change your network password to something that only has alphanumeric characters in it, AKA letters and numbers. I had an ampersand in my home network name and password, and during the initial setup, everything seemed to go just fine. However, shortly afterward, I began having all kinds of connectivity issues. After a half dozen or so factory restores and around 12 hours of Google searching over the course of several days, 
I finally found some info on WD's website that stated not to use special characters and passwords with the Wireless Pro. This would have been super useful information to have included in the box or on the setup screen. I was literally about to return the drive thinking it was defective or something. Anyway, I'd finally found the answer to my problem, uh, so I removed the ampersand from my network name as well as from my password, and voila! All the problems I'd been having just disappeared. Like I said a little while ago, I was going to do a full walkthrough of all the options of the Wireless Pro, but it was really boring. So, earlier in the video, however, I mentioned a couple features of the drive, so let's take a quick look at those. Under the SD card and USB import, we can turn the automatic import option on and off, as well as enable or disable the copy new items only. Uh, with this option on, when you insert an SD card or USB device into the Wireless Pro that has data on it that has already been backed up to the drive, it will skip those files and only copy the new files that have been added since that device was last plugged in. Most of the settings and features of the Wireless Pro can be accessed using the MyCloud app on your phone or tablet. However, there are a couple that can only be accessed using a web browser on a computer, so let's take a quick look at those. I purchased this drive because I want to use it as a portable media server. The Wireless Pro supports Twonky Server as well as Plex Media Server. You can only have one of these two enabled at a time, so it's up to you which one you prefer to use. Uh, personally, I really enjoy using Plex, so I've enabled it on my Wireless Pro. If you're familiar with Plex, you know that one of the cool things about it is its ability to transcode video on the fly and stream it to whatever client device you may be viewing on. The processing power of the My Passport Wireless Pro is understandably not quite up to snuff for this, so you'll need to make sure whatever media you put onto the Wireless Pro is supported on your client devices as they'll only be able to be directly streamed to those clients. The last thing I'm going to touch on here that can't be found on the app is the factory restore settings. If you ever reach a point where you need to restore the drive to its factory defaults, you can do it here through the dashboard or by simultaneously holding down the power and WPS buttons for 10 seconds. In the dashboard, there are two options to do a system only restore or a system and disk restore. The system only restore will reset all the settings back to the factory defaults. So all your network settings, custom passwords and media serving software you may have set up on the drive will be reset back to the defaults. Any data you may have saved to the drive like pictures or videos and stuff will be unaffected and remain on the drive. This is the same type of reset that will occur when you press the power and WPS buttons simultaneously. The other option, the system and disk factory restore, will reset all that same stuff but will also delete all the data on the hard disk. There is several other things that we could continue to sit here and talk about, but uh, this video is already getting kind of long and most people have probably already stopped watching at this point, or skipped ahead. Uh, the last thing that we're going to take a look at is the ability to wirelessly copy files to and from the My Passport Wireless Pro. To copy files from a computer, you need to either be connected to the same network the Wireless Pro is connected to, or connected to the Wireless Pro's Wi-Fi directly. For anyone that's used a computer and copied files from one place to another, this should all be very familiar. Simply open up Windows Explorer, click on Network under the Computer subheading, double click on My Passport or whatever name you've given your device, double click on Storage, and now you can view and copy files to and from the Wireless Pro, just as you would if it were plugged into your computer with a USB cable. You can, of course, also do all of this using your smartphone or tablet via the MyCloud app. 
Just like using a computer, your phone or tablet needs to either be connected to the same network the Wireless Pro is connected to, or connected directly to the Wireless Pro's Wi-Fi. You can then launch the MyCloud app and then navigate to either mobile device if you want to copy files from your phone or tablet to the Wireless Pro, or tap on the Wireless Pro to copy files to your phone or tablet. Viewing files that have been saved on the Wireless Pro is as simple as tapping on the file that you want to view. With as long as this video has already gone on, believe it or not, there is more that we could continue to talk about. But I feel this video has gone on long enough, so I think it's time for me to sign off. All in all, I really like the My Passport Wireless Pro. I think it's a fantastic portable hard drive solution. Once I figured out not to use any special characters in my Wi-Fi network name or password, the device has worked as expected and been exactly what I wanted it to be. I am super excited to come back in my next video to talk about using Plex with the Wireless Pro and showing you how you can take your entire movie library on the go with you and stream them to your devices rather than filling up the storage on your smartphone or tablet with only a handful or two of movies or cutting heavily into your mobile data cap to stream content from your favorite streaming service. Go ahead and like this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, comment down below if you have a question. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. And if you happen to be interested in picking up a My Passport Wireless Pro, I've placed a link to my Amazon store in the video description where you can buy one of your very own. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have yourself a wonderful day and I look forward to hanging out with you again in my next video. Later.